Baruch here with GenConnect.com and I'm joined today by Shelby Coffey, a man who has had an incredible career in the business world and the news world and is now the vice chair of the museum. How are you Mr. Coffey? Very good to be here, thanks very much. Thanks for being here. You clearly understand the news cycle and the news business better than anybody out there. <laughs> the, that business has evolved quite a bit over the last decade, wouldn't you say? The business has evolved and there are lots of other people out there who understand it very well. So we'll uh, dispense with that comparison and talk about the changes and what we're really seeing is the decline of the gatekeeper. When I first came into the business, starting under Catherine Graham and, and Ben Bradley at the Washington Post over 40 years ago, you could get a story in front of 90% of the American people by convincing about 20 men and one woman, Catherine Graham, that that story needed to be out there, the heads of the three networks and the heads of the news magazines and a few newspapers. Today, by contrast, if you, have a, if you want to get an idea out in front of the American public, you have to hit social media, you have to hit websites, you have to hit cable television, a wide variety of things. The plus is that we have an enormous feast of information and news that we can get. Uh, the minus is that the gatekeepers who used to give a kind of a reliability, uh, not always perfect, but a general reliability about the quality of news, uh, do not have anything like the throw weight, the power that sure. they had in the past. So with the decline of the gatekeeper, how is the general public supposed to find those reliable sources? How are they supposed to know who to listen to? Well, it's an interesting thing because in a way you are your own editor and you can bookmark what you find to be reliable sites and not only that, uh, in general news, you can find things that drill down into your particular areas of interest the, uh, in, and get access to information around the world, say in foreign news, that is, would just have been unimaginable 20 years ago. The problem is, are you going to fall into the filter bubble, which is, I, am I only going to look at the websites or watch the programs that agree with me? And that uh, is, is something that I challenge people, including myself, to do all the time, is to find, uh, to find websites, to find programs that are against your general bias in particular issues. Do you think that the concept of the news anchor will remain a powerful position down the road? Interesting point. There will be different kinds of news anchors. Again, uh, speaking to my generation, <laughs> uh, the, we grew up with Walter Cronkite, and that's the way it is, was right. his sign-off. And I don't think we will have the same kind of father figures for the nation uh, anymore, but certainly the power of the individual voice matters. Uh, for example, Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC was here this week, and he was talking about, well, what makes cable television, which, as you know, has become more sharply uh, divided in partisan lines, well, what pulls the appeal? The fact is we want to hear what uh, one or another of those people has to say, how they analyze the news. He said on, on those cable shows, news has become commoditized, but I want to see what Rachel Maddow thinks of this, or I want to see what Bill O'Reilly thinks of this issue. And so that's why we tune in. So it's a great rise of uh, the, the commentariat, if you will. We want more analysis uh, faster. What do you make, though, of the evolution of television as a medium with the advent of the digital space? Where will television be down the road? I, good point, and I think one of the things we're going to see increasingly is the, the shift, especially among younger people, who don't want cable television and its bundles of the same way, and they will, we will move more towards a video world, which is seamless between television and what they can get. Uh, on their computers. And we see it now in, in the entertainment side with Netflix and with Hulu. We'll see more of it uh, in news. Uh, what will be interesting uh, is to see what sports does because the live right. sports broadcasts say that ESPN, the giant in the field, uh, can get and pays a lot uh, to have exclusivity on uh, still remains a, a very uh, high bar. You know, I spoke yesterday with the president of ESPN, and that's how he felt. He said, look, we are in a different category because you won't TiVo the game. You must watch it live, and you must watch it with ESPN. Uh, I think that's very true. There is a strong, compelling event, whereas in news, 
uh, uh, the, you do see spikes in ratings when an event like, say, the Arab Spring is going on or uh, the Boston bombing, you will see it, and people will turn very much and, and want that. And I may add, in those periods, uh, we definitely still do want the kind of commanding, sober-minded uh, uh, leader in, a, uh, in an anchor chair who uh, gives a certain amount of uh, comfort even in those difficult times. How do you consume the news? Um, interesting point, I'm an omnivore. I have, I have a number of bookmarks of uh, uh, publications around the world online. I have, I still like mm, uh, the, the print version of my, uh, my old papers, my old alma mater, the Washington Post, and when I can get it at, in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Times, the New York Times and the Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal. All of those, for somebody who grew up with those, the, there are certain signals in the way stories are played, the way headlines are written, the way a page is arranged that speaks to me. I realize uh, your generation is going to be less so, you weren't raised with it, so that probably will decline. Uh, but I do think the, the trusted brands uh, will continue and will emerge, and I've been glad to see the New York Times uh, do very well with their paywall. Thank you, Mr. Coffey. And for more with Mr. Coffey, be sure to check out genconnect.com and museum.org.